Thanks for joining me, I'm Aaron Rutten, and today I'll be reviewing the brand spanking new Wacom Cintiq 24 Touch. If you've been watching my channel since the beginning, you may recall that my first tablet with a display was the Cintiq 24 HD. This was a serious upgrade for me, since I spent my entire digital art career up until that point drawing on one device while looking up at another. It really took my digital art to a new level. Many display tablets have passed through my studio since then. I've got Cintiqs for weeks. But this new Cintiq 24 gives me a feeling of nostalgia, since it reminds me of my early days as a digital artist. That's why I'm excited to share this tablet with you and reveal all of its features. Quick disclaimer, Wacom sent me this tablet unconditionally for review purposes. As always, all opinions in this video are my own. Also, this is an engineering model, not a final production unit, but it's virtually the same, so I'm told. Without further ado, let's get right into the review. The 2025 Cintiq comes in three different versions. There is a 16-inch display, a 24-inch display, and another 24-inch display that includes multi-touch. The first thing I noticed is that the design aesthetic is very similar to the Cintiq Pro 27. It's fairly thin at just under an inch thick. The thickness is uniform and does not slope. It looks and feels like a large book. Although this tablet feels very dense, it only weighs 11 pounds without the stand attached. The 24 inch screen is 23.8 inches diagonally with outer dimensions of 13.4 by 22.4 inches. The active drawing area is 20.7 by 11.7 inches. It's comparable to a canvas in size, and is spacious enough for art, 3D, video, graphic design, and just about anything else you might want to do with it. The bezel surrounding the tablet is fairly thin. It's not the thinnest Wacom bezel out there, but it's nowhere near the thickness of the older Cintiqs. I know this conserves desk space and cuts down on bulk, but as I've said before, a larger bezel is useful for giving your hand a buffer zone, so the pen doesn't abruptly run off the edge of the tablet. Personally, I'd like more bezel, but maybe I'm in the minority. How do you feel about bezels? The bezel is smooth and overlapped by the glass that covers the screen. The pen flows nicely across the surface, but it does snag just a bit on the extreme edges of the bezel since there isn't much of a buffer zone. The IPS screen is made of anti-glare glass with a slight surface texture. The glass is directly bonded to the display with virtually no parallax. The Cintiq 24 contains an improved IC chip for more responsive and accurate drawing. And I'm excited to learn that this model uses a fanless advanced thermal design, which is able to keep the screen cool and quiet. As someone who records voiceovers near my Cintiq, this is critical for me. I look forward to future Cintiq Pros that are also Sans fans. If we look at the back of the tablet, you can see there aren't any express keys on the sides or back like there are on the newer Cintiq Pros. The Wacom Express Key Remote is compatible, but there isn't anywhere to dock it because of the bezel width. There are other shortcut controllers to choose from as well. A few rubber pads are affixed to the back that keep the tablet from scratching your desk or vice versa. They also keep the tablet from sliding around. The texture of the plastic on the back and sides feels grainy like smooth sandpaper. The sides of the tablet contain various features. There are a couple of buttons, which I will come back to in a moment. There is also a single USB-C port near the top right. This can be used to charge devices and transfer data. There is even a slot which looks like it could be for a memory card, but it isn't. I'll come back to this. And on the left side near the top, you'll find a Kensington lock slot to protect this device from being stolen. Overall, the Cintiq 24 has a nice design aesthetic that feels like a modern day canvas. Let's look at the buttons on the bottom right side of the tablet. The bottom most button can power the display on and off. It has a distinct texture so you can find it by feel. It's also about the size of a fingertip, which makes it easier to press. You hold it down to power the display off, and press it once to power it on. Above that is a button to open the on-screen menu. While it isn't textured, it has a cutout that makes it easy to find by feel as well. Unlike the Cintiq Pro 27, which requires you to navigate the menu with the express keys on the back of the tablet, 
This one gets it right. You can use touch or the pen to navigate the menu. This is how the Cintiq Pro 27 should have been. The options in the menu are as follows. Input source allows you to toggle between the USB-C and HDMI video inputs. Display settings contain standard adjustments like color mode and brightness. You can choose between native or sRGB color modes. 99% of DCI P3 color is supported and 100% of sRGB color. The brightness is set somewhat low by default, so you may want to crank that up. The maximum brightness is 350 CD with a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1. While it's not technically the best color accuracy you can get on a display tablet, it's actually pretty decent and good enough for a lot of tasks. In the root level of the display settings, there is a handy slider that gives you quick access to the brightness. I really like this since it makes it easy to adjust the screen for a brighter or darker environment. As someone who records their screen often, it's convenient to be able to make quick adjustments like this. You can also use the menu to turn multi-touch on and off. I think this would have been better as a dedicated button since even my older Cintiq 24 HD could do that. Having to press a button, then tap on a separate button on the screen really interrupts the creative flow. At least the on-screen button is not far from the physical button. I appreciate that the menu is in the corner near the button rather than centered on the screen. And last, the other settings allow you to change the menu language and transparency. You can also customize the brightness for the blue power LED on the side. And you can even customize what the power button does, toggling it from powering the device off to simply putting the display to sleep. You are probably wondering why the stand included with this tablet is not attached. Because of how my desk is set up, I need to use a monitor arm rather than the included adjustable stand. The stand is easy to remove using a small hex wrench which is included. I do want to show you how the stand works, so I've attached it to the Cintiq Pro 16 which has 75mm VESA holes on the back. The stand works great. I can depress this tab to disengage the locking mechanism and change the angle. This stand feels very similar to the stand for the older Wacom 16 and 22. Considering I am using it on a tablet that is not officially supported, I think it's safe to say it will work on pretty much any VESA compatible display. The stand is fairly rugged and can tilt with 16 to 69 degrees of angle. I want to be able to easily move the Cintiq into place when I want to use it, so this monitor arm works better for me. But that also makes the display a little wobbly. The stand keeps the display much more rigid, so I would probably be inclined to use the stand if this were my primary tablet. I also like being able to rotate the Cintiq to a vertical orientation, which cannot be done with the official stand. I wouldn't be surprised if the Zoot system supports this tablet in the future. That would be an even better choice in my opinion. The 2025 version of the Cintiq 24 and 16 come with the Pro Pen 3. The grips and other button configurations you'd normally get are not included. I have a Pro Pen 3 from a different tablet so you can see what is missing. These grips are nice, so it's unfortunate that they were left out. I personally do not like the Pro Pen 3, so I will be using the Pro Pen 2 instead. This is the slim version. Other pens like the Wacom Art Pen work on this device, but not any of the EMR pens like the Stadler Norris Digital. Which is surprising since the Intuos Pro I just reviewed does. Up to 8192 pressure levels are supported on this tablet. It can also support 60 degrees of pen tilt. And rotation is supported if you have the exceedingly rare Wacom Art Pen. Remember the mysterious slot on the side of the Cintiq? This is used to attach the pen holder. It can be placed on either side and rotated to different angles. It lightly grips the pen, but I'd still worry about knocking it out of the stand accidentally. Especially if I had too much coffee. I much prefer storing the pen on the tablet rather than the desk, considering my multitude of monitor arms make that extremely difficult. However, the pen holder becomes useless if you use a monitor arm to rotate your display. The pen should really be able to go deeper inside the stand. I think that would hold it more securely. When you rotate the stand, it clicks into specific intervals. It doesn't feel like the pen will flop forward or backward. Pull off the end cap and you'll find two nibs, one standard and one felt, hiding alongside a nib remover. 
This might be the most cryptic nib holder yet. Also included is a pack of nibs, but I seem to have already lost them. I rarely change a nib and I have extras, so no worries there. If you were curious if the pen holder can accommodate other Wacom pens, the answer is mostly no. If you want to get trivial, the Wacom 1 pen is the only pen I have that fits snugly, but it's not even compatible with the Cintiq 24. Next up is the Pro Pen Slim, which is what I prefer to use on this tablet. It's loose as a goose. How about the Pro Pen 1 and 2? Nope and nope. And with the flared tip of the art pen, there's no hope. The only other pen I found that hangs on almost as well as the Pro Pen 3 is the airbrush pen. But does anyone actually use that? Also, if you add the grip to the Pro Pen 3, it still fits securely. It's not able to go as deep into the stand as it can without the grip, but it's wider, so I'd say it's about equal in terms of stability. There are a few different ways to connect the Cintiq 24 to your computer. First, you can use a USB-C cable, so long as your computer supports DisplayPort Alt Mode. You'll need one cable for power in all the different connection configurations. The power cable connects to a power brick. I tested the USB-C connection with my MacBook, and it works great. But it's my desktop computer that I'm most interested in using this with. Unfortunately, my GPU does not have a USB-C output, so I have to use HDMI. Normally this is fine, but this particular tablet uses HDMI to HDMI Mini, which is sort of uncommon. If you do not have this cable, you can buy one from Wacom's website or elsewhere, but I wanted to use the tablet right away. Fortunately, I have an adapter to convert HDMI to HDMI Mini, but there is one problem. This cable router thing blocks the HDMI cable from plugging in if it is too tall. I searched my studio some more and found an HDMI to HDMI Mini cable, but it was too short. Since I am incredibly lucky, or maybe just a hoarder, I also happen to have an HDMI extender, so after all that, I finally got the tablet connected. This is something to keep in mind if you're planning to use HDMI rather than USB-C. It didn't feel like there was a way to remove the cable router, it feels like it's stuck in there for good. What's annoying is that this piece doesn't really hold the cables very well anyway, and they can still fall out. So I'm not sure why this piece was added, but I think it inhibits more than it helps. The included cables are all long enough to reach the back of my computer, and have enough slack to allow me to swing the Cintiq around on a monitor arm. The USB cable is around 6 feet long, and the power cable is around 3 feet. As far as compatibility goes, the 2025 Cintiq 16 and 24 all support Windows 10 or later, and Mac OS 13 or later. They even support Android 8.0 and above. If I disconnect the USB-C cable I am using to transfer data to my desktop, and plug in a different USB-C cable that supports video and is connected to my Android smartphone, you can see it allows me to use my phone as a computer. Considering I can use the full version of Krita on my phone, this is actually pretty awesome. Sure, my phone is not nearly as powerful as my desktop, and Krita will be laggy, but for sketching, inking, coloring, and many other tasks, this is more than sufficient. If you're a traveling or performing artist, this would be a fairly minimal setup. The cables aren't terribly bulky, and the Cintiq has a uniform profile that would make it easy to slip into a protective case or sleeve, as long as you don't mind removing the stand. I am using thumb screws, so that's fairly quick to do. You can even use a power bank instead of plugging the Cintiq into a wall, so long as the bank can support AC power and something like a monitor. If you could build some sort of housing for all this, you'd have a pretty nice all-in-one tablet. The prices of the 2025 Cintiq line range from $699.95 for the 16-inch model, up to $1,499.95 for the 24 with touch. It's basically $200 more for multi-touch. If you want to purchase this tablet, there's a link in the description of this video. That covers all of the features and specs of the new 2025 Cintiq 24 touch. Now I'd like to make a few comparisons to other similar tablets around 24 inches or larger. My Cintiq 27 QHD is still going strong after more than 8 years of daily use. I've not replaced it yet, because the newer tablets all have noisy fans, but I don't hear a peep coming from the new Cintiq 24. 
It doesn't even have fan vents. The resolution is the same, the screen is slightly brighter, and the pen sensitivity is much higher. But unfortunately, the color is limited to 99% of DCI-P3 in 8-bit mode. This is not quite as color accurate as the Cintiq 27 QHD, but it's close. Plus, 24 inches is a little too small for my taste. I'll probably keep doing all of my serious illustrations on the Cintiq 27 QHD, since the color accuracy is superior. However, for recording my demonstrations, I might end up doing that on the Cintiq 24 because it doesn't strobe when I record the screen with my camera. For an extra thousand or two, you can opt for the Cintiq Pros, which have exceptionally accurate color, 4K resolution, and other features that might appeal to professionals. You can see some of the key comparisons here on this chart I made. Honestly, this Cintiq 24 is pretty good. If the work you do doesn't require full Adobe RGB coverage, then 99% of DCI-P3 is adequate. I do care about color accuracy for printing, so Adobe RGB coverage is essential for me. But if I were only doing video work, then P3 would be just fine. I don't see much of a reason to pay that much extra for a little more color accuracy and 4K resolution. That's not to mention you have to buy a stand for these Cintiq Pros. At least as far as the display menu is concerned, the Cintiq 24 is a better design. In conclusion, the new Wacom Cintiq 24 Touch presents a compelling option for digital artists, offering a balance of price and features. Despite some minor issues like the obstructive cable router, the Cintiq 24 provides excellent value at its price point, especially when considering the cost of the Cintiq Pros. For those who prioritize a quiet, comfortable drawing experience and don't require the absolute bleeding edge in color accuracy or resolution, the Cintiq 24 Touch stands out as a strong contender. That's all for this review. If you enjoyed this video, please show your support for this channel by becoming a member or checking out some of my premium digital art resources like brushes and courses. I create content for Krita, Rebel, Photoshop, Painter, and more. I even offer universal courses that can be applied to just about any art software. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.